All right, we're back working on our Bug Eye Sprite project. Uh, today we're going to start dealing with suspension and take some suspension pieces apart. And then we're going to get into part storage and how we organize parts and, you know, separate stuff out for either painting or media blasting or polishing and, and what have you. All right, so this is the front corner of a Bug Eye Sprite. The, this is a lever shock. Uh, an old-fashioned style lever shock and on a bug eye, all, actually all sprites and midgets, MG midgets and bug eye sprites, this is the actual upper A-arm. Uh, very crude, very simple system, but uh, it's a lightweight car and it works. This is another lever shock that I sent up to Apple Hydraulics and had them rebuilt. They've also done uh, what's called a heavy-duty rebuild, which means they've changed the valving in a little bit, little bit uh, to make it have a little bit more performance. So these lower A-arms, there's actually a pin. This is a lot of people don't know this and just keep beating on these things to get it apart. But there's a pin that goes right down in here that freezes up. Uh, this was the race car that we we're using for parts, so the pin was in good shape. Once you do that, there's actually a threaded rod that holds this uh, kingpin in, which you have to take out with a screwdriver. This lower A arm, we've pressed out the bushings. You can see this one still has the bushings in it. These come right out, unlike a lot of bushings, uh, these press right out. To clean parts, we use a, a, either a parts washer or this, this uh, new CRC parts cleaner and degreaser works really well for cleaning stuff off. We use a lot of that. But the idea is you want to at least get the rough dirt and stuff off of it before you send a piece out to powder coating. At, at some point, I, I, we also need to discuss powder coating versus painting. Uh, we've done a lot of these cars where we've just painted these components. Uh, Eastwood's Chassis Black is a nice black paint for, for painting suspension components. Uh, if, you, if you have the luxury of having a good friend that's a powder coater, that's certainly nice. But even if, if your friend isn't a powder coater, in the overall cost of a restoration, you know, you're talking six, eight hundred dollars difference probably to have stuff powder coated and it's way easier on you because you don't have to hang all the stuff and paint it and sand it and all that. So it certainly makes a restoration a lot quicker and easier if you have that uh, luxury or, or are willing to spend that money. Another thing to consider is, is what is your end game? Like, as I said, this car is kind of a hooligan sprite. We're not real worried about originality or everything being correct. We're not going to a Concours event. Um, but you do need to consider when you're restoring something, especially if you're trying to go to a more concord level, what was it like originally? These were originally satin black. You can see the remains of satin black paint. Um, so that would be correct. And if you powder coat that part or paint it, you really can't tell the difference. So as long as it's not overly restored, you can get away with powder coating stuff even on a Concorde car. So as you're going through these parts and you're taking stuff apart, you should be doing two things. You should have your iPhone out, you should be taking pictures of every part, and then you should have a notepad. So right now is the time to say, oh, I need new control arm bushings. Now in this case, we're going to use an offset control arm bushing. Again, kind of a hooligan hot rod thing to get more negative camber in this car. But you should make notes as you go. Do you need to send these shocks out to be rebuilt? Do you need brake discs? Do you need bearings? Um, you can reuse bearings. You need to look at them under a magnifying glass. And if the races in the bearing surfaces are boogered up or rusted or, or worn, you need to replace them. But if not, a lot of these earlier parts were nicer quality than some of the stuff you can get today, so I'm not afraid to use a bearing again as long as it's in real nice shape. Uh, seals, on the other hand, are usually never reusable. Another thing you need to think of is when is it time to order these parts? You certainly want to make your list now. Uh, what comes into play there is, is money. Uh, if you're the kind of person that can just order everything now, Fine. The only downside of that is if you're not going to get back to this in, in, you know, for a year or six months and then you ordered the wrong part, then how do you return it a year or two later? So there is a happy medium here. Um, what's even more frustrating is if you're trying to work on something and you don't have the parts because you didn't order them early and then there's a back order you have to wait. 
I mean, generally we will, we, we jam through a restoration in less than a year. We'll go through, we'll make our list, we'll order basically everything, or at least in stages. I would at least say, okay, let's order all the suspension bushings and seals and parts that we need now. And then maybe we might do the interior stuff later and not have that sitting on the shelf. So again, that's a matter of time, money, and, and your temperament. But definitely write down a list of what you need as you're disassembling your car. A car, even a small car like a Bug Eye Sprite, is very, very large once you take it all apart and you have it scattered all over your garage. So you need to figure out a system, whether it's boxes, shelves, bins, to, to organize your parts. I try to do it, uh, body parts in one area, interior parts in another, engine in one box, and, and suspension in, in one shelf or, or box. Another nice thing, in this case, we have a parts car. So we can take one corner apart like we have this this piece is, is from another car and then we'll leave this one assembled that way when we come back to putting it together we'll have extra hardware you know in case we can't find these bolts we'll have a kind of a road map of how it all goes back together and what hardware goes where and if you don't have a parts car even more so you need to photograph every aspect so this is the kingpin that came out of here and it's kind of the basis of the upright for a Sprite suspension. This is loose and rocking back and forth. It is junk and you have to replace it. This stuff looks pretty rough, so I think we're gonna go ahead and just replace it. Companies like Moss Motors, they've got kits, that they've got this whole thing. They've got a whole big suspension kit that has every bushing and bolt and everything you need to put a suspension together on one of these, and it's about 200 bucks. Before you decide, oh, I wanna put 100 hours into this and try to rebuild it, look through a catalog and say, oh, the whole thing's a couple hundred bucks. Maybe I don't want to mess with this one anymore. And then some stuff is unobtainable and you need to be more careful as you disassemble it and you're going to have to save it. So the car we're building is a 1960 Austin Healey Sprite. And it, the bug eye is that early body style is called, did not have disc brakes. As you can see, these are clearly disc brakes. So what you can do is use a later model car. We've got another parts car that we also are incorporating, which was a 1973 MG Midget. An MG Midget mechanically is pretty much identical to an Austin Healey Sprite. So you can easily take the later disc brakes off one of these cars and put them onto an earlier car. You will need the uprights and obviously the caliper mounts and uh, that's pretty much it. The rest of it, the lever shocks and the lower A-arms can be used over again. All right, so that kind of wraps up our discussion on front suspension. We'll obviously get more into this when we put the car back together, but let's go look at the rear end because it's kind of interesting on an early Sprite. All right, this is the rear suspension of a Bug Eye Sprite. As you can see, it's freaking tiny. <laughs> These are small cars. The whole car only weighs about 1,400 pounds. This is pretty much stock. This was out of our race car that we bought. So these uh, trailing arms are, are not what a stock one would look like. But other than that, this is a stock rear end on a Bug Eye Sprite. As you can see, these are quarter elliptic rear springs. So what does that mean? That means that these basically just go into the body. They're mounted in like this. And this just does this. Uh, you've got your lever shocks again uh, at the rear. Uh, there was no rear anti-roll bar on one of these cars when they were new, nor do you really need one. And uh, the later cars, again, I believe in about 63, went to what's called a semi-elliptic spring. So that would have been a more traditional spring where your axle is in the middle and your spring goes to the, to the back of the car up to the, you know, towards the front and a more conventional uh, spring arrangement like any American car from the 60s. But uh, these were different, and it, it really works pretty well. Uh, it's not the best for ride quality, but from a performance standpoint, it worked pretty well. These things won tons and tons of SCCA national championships. So it's a pretty, pretty effective, although crude little suspension design. So what you want to do is you're building one of these. This is, a, this is the rear end housing from a later car. And as you can see, this is all different. This is meant for a, a standard semi-elliptic spring. So we had this later car, this is from a 1973. So what we did is we took the gears out of it. The gears on the, on the, the 73 
uh, because it had the larger 1275 engine by then, uh, the big block as we say in the, in the Sprite world. Um, the 370 gears are a lot better for highway driving. We're going to put a 1275 and we're going to supercharge it with the MOS kit that we've got. So we're not worried about gear ratio. The original Sprite would have had probably a 422 final drive and your top speed's going to be 65, 70 miles an hour in any kind of civilized street driving. So you cannot use the later rear end housing with the, sem with the quarter, you cannot use the later housing with the quarter elliptic springs, but you can use the internals out of it. Uh, the rear brakes were a little better. They are uh, tuned to run with disc brakes because that's what those cars had then. Uh, so the pieces, the, the wheel cylinders and such are sized to, to work with front discs. The axles are considered a little stronger. And uh, again, the gears are more suitable for modern driving with a little more power in a, in a hot rod type Sprite. So we'll, we'll get everything disassembled. We'll get it cleaned up, uh, wire brush, parts washer, whatever it takes, scraper. Uh, and then we will take everything down and get it powder coated. So we'll reassemble this whole rear end and then the front corners as units and then basically put them aside until we're ready to install them on the car. We'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to our channel. That way you'll get updates as soon as we've got another Sprite video up and uh, as well as all the other cool stuff we're doing. And uh, ClassicMotorsports.com has updates on this and every project we've done uh, every week. Support brands that support Classic Motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit CRCIndustries.com to learn more.